So I tweeted the other day and I said, most poker players who have figured out how to make 100K plus a year playing poker could make 300K plus a year doing something else. Agree or disagree? I disagree. Let's start with what it means to make 300K a year. Okay. Right, so I went to indeed.com and looked for jobs in Los Angeles where you can earn 300K plus a year. And this is what I came up with. Attorney, staff physician, psychiatrist, oncologist, medical director, vice president of an insurance company, CEO, chief of financial planning, and endocrinologist. Indro, endo, endro, endocrinologist. Say that three times very fast. Endocrinologist, endocrinologist, endocrinologist. That's pretty good. And I think that I could dedicate myself to any one of those professions for five years, really work very hard and not get to 300K. Okay, so here is why I'm a little bit on the other side of the fence. 5% of income earners in America in 2022 earned 335,000 or above. This is for individuals, not households. So here is my point. In poker, do you think one in 20 people trying at poker, playing 800, 900, 1,000 plus hours a year are earning over $100,000 a year playing poker? There's probably some argument based on what you mean by trying, but no. I do not think so. No. I would say it's closer to one in 50 or one in 75 that are making over six figures a year playing poker than anywhere near one in 20. Yeah, it's not easy to do. So my argument is, is that it is much easier to make 300 plus thousand dollars a year outside poker since one in 20 Americans are doing it than it is to make 100K a year playing poker. And I would argue that the skill set that you learn in poker translates. Now, it doesn't translate to being an endocrinologist or right. an orthopedic surgeon or right. whatever, but I would say it translates to business. And some of those skills are prioritizing process over results logic over emotion, the ability to reason and, and rationalize on the spot, the ability to show up after getting punished every single day and still have that determination. And, and plus, like, there has to be, like, a pretty good, like, baseline of intelligence as well, right? Because essentially, at its core, poker is a game of kind of outthinking people. So I would argue that those qualities, while they may not translate to more specialized fields, they would give a poker player a heads up as far as starting a business or working at some type of startup and I just think they would have a higher chance than than average of making greater than 300k. I guess there are some other skills maybe though that are involved in winning at business such as the ability to schmooze which of course can be a big skill in poker as well which, sure. which maybe we can get into at some point but is not necessary to succeed in, in public games at least. Mm -hmm. I have a very good skill set to succeed in poker. I, I would be pretty skeptical of my own ability to make 300k at a year of business. I have yet to make 300K plus a year running a business outside of poker. So I can't say this for sure, right? Like I'm, I'm kind of putting my mouth before my toes, as they say, that's the old expression. Oh. Looking, thinking about myself, like I, I, you know, you point an AR-15 at my head and say, you have to make 300K a year within five years. An AR-15 stands for assault rifle, by the way. Not a lot of people know that. You point an AR-15. What do, what, at, do you, what do most people think it stands for? I don't know, actually. Andy Rickens. Andy Rickens. But yeah, you point the gun at my head. You say you have to make 300K a year in five years or it's over. Like, I, I don't, I, maybe I would figure out a way to do it, but I, think I, you would do, do, it. I do not know what it would be. I think you would do it. Listen, one in 20 Americans have figured out how to do it. And look, it doesn't mean like you're a dummy if you haven't figured out how to do it because a lot of these people have some type of inherent advantage. I'm just saying one in 20 is a, a good amount of people. Like for myself, like my, I know what my weaknesses are. My weaknesses are, I'm, like you talked about, I'm not a good schmoozer. I'm not a good network. I'm extremely introverted. Maybe have your business partner, that's their strength, right? Just because like you may have some weaknesses doesn't mean you're incapable of succeeding. I think if they're pointing the Andy Rickens at your head that I think you'd figure it out in five years. <laughs>
like they don't want to make 100K a year. That is not actually their priority. They might think that it is, they might say that it is, but then they're not sitting in the best games. They're not playing consistent numbers of hours. They're sitting in the biggest games in the room when the second biggest game in the room is actually much better and probably more profitable for them. I think that a lot of people who are better poker players really prioritize their ego above making money. You're someone every year, what do you play? 1500 hours, like just like clockwork every mm -hmm. year, you're just showing up, you're there 35, 40 hours a week. Why is it so hard for the average poker player to do that? I, I think that some people need a boss. Poker is a job without a boss. And if you skip work, no one's going to tell you you're fired or suffer other consequences or any sort of social problem as a result of, of your not showing up. And so a lot of people just don't show up for that reason. I mean, a lot of people just need someone telling them you have to do this or I'm going to be disappointed and so, you know, 100K a year is pretty hard, right? That's doing very well at 2.5. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's not like a top, top win rate at 2.5, but it's a very good win rate. With the way live poker works, I mean, there are only there's only regular 5.10 in, you know, a fairly limited number of markets. It's just going to be tricky for a lot of people. I remember I went on your podcast two years ago mm -hmm. and I said I could teach my grandma to make $50 an hour playing poker. Mm -hmm. I am so far from that now. I've come completely to the other side because I've realized as a teacher, as a coach, how hard it actually is to instill not only the knowledge and the aptitude and the material someone needs, but also to instill the work ethic and the, the discipline that you also need to be successful in poker. And a lot of that stuff, I feel like maybe I just haven't developed enough as a coach, but I feel like a lot of it is somewhat out of my control still mm -hmm. at this point. It's true. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's only, you know, I, I think we've, we've really helped a lot of people get better, but I, I, at some level they have to figure it out for themselves. That's mm -hmm. absolutely the case. All right, everybody, I'll tell you what, subscribe to this channel and what you will get this exclusive no one else has gotten this yet. This Have I gotten it? Well, you created it. Oh, okay. You actually created this. And so if you subscribe to the channel, you will get the official Charlie Wilmoth NFT. And in that NFT, he's actually semi-nude. And you will get that NFT. All you have to do is you go up to Charlie in person, see him at a casino, show him you're subscribed to Hungry Horse Poker, and he will airdrop you the semi-nude Charlie Wilmoth NFT. Thank you for creating that for us. Absolutely. Here's the follow-up question for you. Do you think that most people earning north of $300,000 a year outside poker could make $100,000 a year in poker if they dedicated all of their time to it? Similar answer, I'm sure some could. I think for a lot of recreational players, it's not really their priority to show how great they are at poker all the time. And you know, if they had to make money, they would probably change the way they played. But you do see in, in many recreational players, hints of that ability, mm -hmm. right? Whereas there have also been recreational players I've played with who have been very successful people who I've seen no hints of that ability. Mm -hmm. Just like the flip side of this, like maybe a lot of the skills they've developed that have made them successful in business or whatever field they're in that they had to study for eight years to, to be a doctor or a lawyer or whatever. They did, they did something difficult. Yeah. You know, not and not all rich people did something difficult to get their money, but some of them did, mm -hmm. you know, and, and some of the ones who did, they're capable of think, doing things that are intellectually difficult and sure that makes sense that that would translate yeah i think it i think it gives them a leg up like you said but it doesn't guarantee it i mean one thing that might stand in their way is just our, having already had money yeah. You know, I, yeah. I, I think, you know, one one reason why I had some success in poker is because I really needed the money. Same. You know, I, I, I had to figure it out. Like, you know, if I, I were to sit down in cash games and, and lose money for significant periods of time, I would probably either improve or leave very quickly. So let's add another wrinkle. Okay. Let's say whatever amount of money, they can get side action on it, whatever amount of money to make it worthwhile for them. So let's say <laughs> they, can, like, they can 10x. Yeah, so yeah, they can okay. 10x it. So like they have, say, three months to train, six months to train, whatever and if they can consistently over the next two years after that earn over 100k a year playing poker then they can have 5 million or 10 million or whatever side action they want to make it worth their time sure so they're quitting their jobs yes they are leaving behind their former careers yes completely they're done they're... their wife and kids i'm sorry I, yeah i've got some sims to run baby yes i think to come back to to what we started the video with making 300k plus a year is is hard making 100k plus a year from poker also very hard, mm -hmm. I would say. Yeah, would you say it's harder? I just want to get you on this one. <laughs> I don't know. I, like I said, I, I think that that we're talking about two different things on two different scales, or many different scales, depending on how you made your 300K. Apples and vanilla pudding. Yeah, or, or apples and 18 other different types of food. Mm -hmm. Like snails.
That's that's an example of a food, yes. Mm -hmm. A lot of people enjoy snails. Sure. Most people in Bolivia only eat snails. Have a gentle day.